Hey guys, Nishquick here, and welcome back to another episode of the EXP Podcast. I have two amazing, awesome guests here to chat about the amazing and awesome, surprising announcement of Xenoblade Chronicles X Definitive Edition. It is finally here. Um, we have a returning uh, guest, that is Yggdrasil, and we have a new guest, and that is GK. I'm very excited to have both these guys on, and um, you guys can introduce yourself. Um, GK, you want to go first, since this is your first time on the channel? Oh yeah, uh, I'm GK, uh, artist, content creator on YouTube, um, yapper on Twitter. Yeah, that's it, pretty much. I um, I remember. I, I think I like found your Twitter account like maybe like two years back. Like you had some good takes, and I was like, oh, I'll follow this guy. And then I saw the Xenoblade X banner. And I was like, yep, based, based. Yeah, favorite <laughs> game of all time. Yeah. And then um. <laughs> This year, like, you started, like, the YouTube channel and the Twitch stuff, which has been really fun to um, just listen to your <laughs> just chatting streams. They're really chill and fun to listen to, so the, those yeah, are Yeah, nice. I appreciate you, man. Yeah. I, I'm having fun doing it. Yeah, yeah. And Idrisil, you want to introduce yourself to the people who may not remember you or maybe seeing you for the first time on the EXP podcast? <laughs> Sounds good. Hey everyone, it's Yggdrasil. I hope we're all having a great time so far. And yes, I'm glad to be back on the podcast, especially for the Xenoblade X news. For those of you who don't know me, I am a analyst for the Xenoblade series. I, com I comprehensively covered Xenoblade Chronicles 3, and I'm more than excited to be doing the same thing for Xenoblade Chronicles X Definitive Edition. It makes me very happy that so many people will finally get the chance to play this game. Having played this myself, having watched Nishquick go through his journey on it, I'm more than stoked. Although he needs uh, to get up on the lobster. I need to do lobster, quest, yeah. And I, I am I'm fervently pushing for the trauma for him. Yeah, I think um, I'm gonna put my live streaming like session on hold until the definitive edition comes out. So I'll have to do <laughs> lobster quest in full HD on the Switch. We'll see it one way or another. But yeah. yes, so I cover that. I talk about general RPG content. My main focus, though, is on Monolith Soft and RPGs and Nintendo. Um, I'm pretty much the same. I draw when I have spare time, though, not recently. I talk on Twitter, I talk on X, and I post on YouTube. So Yeah, uh, yeah all these guys' channels, uh, YouTube's, Twitter's, Blue Skies, all that will be in the description down below. And Yggdrasil's got an awesome new video on Xenoblade X, and it's doing really good, so shout-outs to you. Also, congrats Thank on hitting you. 600 subs. So, I yeah. know, I'm so glad yeah. after after almost, probably, I think, a year of stagnancy, finally, and then just yeah. to see almost, uh, almost like a fifth of the people that follow me now are just yeah. completely new is, is very that's, humbling. That's awesome. So, Thank you. Yeah, but anyways... I um so this is called the EXP podcast and I like to call it that because like of course like experience points all that but like we like I like to talk about like my experience with certain games and I like to hear about everyone else's experience with games too. My experience with Xenoblade X is very different from many other people and my experience with the series is just generally different. So I want to hear your guys' stories. Like I've heard a little bit of Yggdrasil's from like when the game launched, but I want to hear what it was like for you guys. When this game came out on the Wii U, playing it like before Xenoblade was like big with Xenoblade 2 and 3. So like mm -hmm. fill me in on these stories, guys. GK, you want to go first? Yeah. So, OK, I'm going to start. I don't want to make this too long and drawn out, but I'm going to start with my history with Xenoblade in general, because mm -hmm. I think this is like important context. So uh, when Operation Rainfall uh, first came out, uh which was the movement to get some Wii games localized in America. Yeah. Uh, Xenoblade 1, right, was the one that interested me the most. I got it on launch, Xenoblade 1. I got it on launch when it originally came out on the Wii. And then I didn't like it. And then I dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for some reason, I came back, I think, maybe three or four months later. And I was like, okay, people keep talking about this game. Let me see if something's not clicking. So I tried it again and I was like, oh, something's clicking. I like it now. <laughs> so so then I got through Xenoblade 1 and then uh, there was the infamous, when the in the Wii U era, there was the infamous Direct, the de the emergency Direct <laughs> where uh, they announced Wind Waker, uh, 
Shin Megami Tensei Crossfire yeah. Emblem and Xenoblade X was in there too. Mm-hmm. And I saw the mechs, I saw the whole open world sci-fi setting and I was like, oh, I like Xenoblade and I like sci-fi and mechs. So I was like, this is perfect for me. So it launched and when I tell you I had unhealthy marathons with Xenoblade X uh, <laughs> when it initially came out. I'm just talking about sleepless nights, uh, little contact with the outside world. Um, you see, it's my banner on Twitter. I have a, if you see my streams, it's, the, it's my favorite game of all time. So yeah. that's pretty much my you got, like, short. You got a poster in the back of your room as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's the game. Um, uh, if if you think about GK, you, you're usually thinking about uh, Xenoblade X in terms yeah. of. It's also your Discord game. profile picture, right? That's uh... yeah. Is it my Discord profile picture? Is <laughs> nice. Uh, my uh, my character, my main character in uh, Xenoblade X. So mm-hmm. so yeah, that's my short little history on how I got around to Xenoblade X. Yeah. To keep it s- simple. Yeah. <laughs> my story is how many very hours? different from you guys, but I, I want to hear Yggdrasil's once again. Yeah. For sure. How many hours, GK? How many hours? You know what's crazy? I think it's maybe like 120, 123. It's not crazy. It's nothing crazy. But I don't you know. Said, well, maybe it feels I'm, like I'm so much. From, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm kind of speaking from like a nerd perspective because some people, I know some people who have 500, Damn. 1,000. One but, of my you best know, friends yeah. from school who like got me into the Xenoblade series, he's also like huge on X. It's his favorite game of all time. He spent, um, he did two playthroughs of the game and uh, like total with both of those playthroughs, he exceeded like 300 plus hours. That's crazy. (laughs) Yeah, it is. It is the one Xenoblade game where you can just keep coming back and like, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yes. It's one of those games. I've seen someone will hit the hour cap. Uh, I can't remember where I saw. I think it was a uh, Xeno Reddit, but they hit the hour cap on there. What is it? That was nuts to me. Like it was like 999. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, my God, what are you doing? You're leaving me <laughs> for days at a time. Like, geez. He's he's getting all the um frontier nav revenue. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. Yeah. Oil yeah. barons of Miram. I mean, come yeah. on. Um so for me, um I didn't pick up Xenoblade one on on uh launch on the Wii, but I was at a friend's birthday party and after Smash Bros and everything was done, they were out cutting the cake. Um but my friend pulled me away. He's like, hey, I got a game. I know you like RPGs because we were big Tales fans at the time. And we were gushing over uh, Tales of Symphonia. And he pulls me uh, he pulls me into the room and he opens Xenoblade for the first time. I finally see this. And we completed the entire prologue. And I was like, well, I can't just be left there. So I went and I got my own copy. Uh, and I fell in love with the game. And I have probably some 500 probably yeah, and not including the definitive edition now probably like somewhere around 700 hours in the base game of uh yeah. definitive or, or base game just, of just Bionis Xenoblade and 1. Alone. <laughs> yeah i know um so naturally i was on top of it with xenoblade x when that got announced and you know my mind was racing at that very first infamous trailer where they have this character pop up that we think it it's shulk or yeah. it alludes to it being shulk and we're like how is this even gonna remotely work so I stayed on top of all the information. Unfortunately, um, for those who aren't aware, Xenoblade X first released um, for Japan only in April, um, April 2014. So we had to wait a grueling eight months (laughs) until we got the game. Avoiding spoilers and all that. that. And avoiding everything, staying away from everything offline because the whole game we knew from like two days in, uh, unfortunately. So I would just bide my time listening to the music on YouTube. I got myself the collector's edition, and uh, there's a uh, funny little thing about this, the collector's edition. There's a <laughs> life hold USB, the USB that was notorious for bricking people's computers and laptops Crazy. for whatever reason. It didn't do that for mine. Um, it just had none of the music on it because it was supposed to have six or seven tracks had nothing on it and was completely unusable so it just sits there's a fancy piece was it um, some but, just weird drm they had with it 
or like... I have no clue. It, it's something. It was a very weak file size. Okay. Like it was just enough to fit the music and nothing else. And if I you remember did anything else, Zeno it Bits would crash. has a video on that, so I can go back and look yeah. At it, yeah. Um. So that's just the funny little thing. But as for the game itself. I love the game. The game didn't love me at the very start because I'll never forget. Um, I got hard locked uh, at the very start of the oh, game. God. As soon as I, we, as soon as you do the Grex fight to get that to then go into um, NLA for the first time, the cutscene never played. Oh. <laughs> and um, I couldn't leave the Grex area, and so I had to restart the game. Was that a and, pre or post um, data pack? This was day one the data packs were also available day one okay um because the data packs and the the dlc were all uh downloadable day one um which also japan had to pay for the dlc if uh, western audiences did not so take what we get um but so that got hard locked then i was like okay fine whatever i redo it i redo the start it works thank goodness and then I, it was the same thing as gk i would just binge night on night on night i'll never forget and it really annoyed me. There's a unique monster in um, Primordia that only spawns during a thunderstorm at night uh, on the lake. And I spent hours waiting for it to start because I didn't know what procced uh, weather at the time. I didn't yeah. know it was yet to go and change time and all that. Um, so after like two or three hours of just doing whatever until the thunderstorm came, thunderstorm came, I killed the monster. I was so ecstatic. I played for another hour. And then my Wii U crashed. Oh, you didn't save. And I hadn't, I had not saved oh, in four right. or five hours. Oh no! <laughs> and that did not deter me. I just had another day without sleep. I played yeah. through it all through the night, and I, I have my file at ninety-eight, ninety-nine percent completion with like one hundred ninety-eight hours. I think it's just um, finished the final super boss and a few nodes here and there that I'm missing. But I felt complete at that time, nice. so... Yeah, um, I've, I've had some... Yeah. E even this year, as I was playing the game, I had some, like, times where I played the game, got to a certain point, and then I either, like, had to, like, just reload my save or something. I don't remember the specific situation, but I had to reload a save and I lost a whole bunch of progress after I realized, and I was like, oh, crap. But yeah... Um, my history with Xenoblade is very different from you guys, very different from many people. Because most people, like most uh, noobs who got into Xenoblade, got into it with Xenoblade 2. I didn't get into Xenoblade until 2020 with Xenoblade Definitive Edition. Like, so many people assume, like, oh, oh. Nishkwok, you love Xenoblade so much. I'm relatively very new to the series. So I played Xenoblade 1, loved it. And then I heard all these like uh, negative murmurings about Xenoblade 2. Oh, it's so different. It's too anime. Uh, the gameplay is not very good. The combat sucks. And I was like, oh, I don't know about Xenoblade 2. Xenoblade X looks really cool. I can just dust off my Wii U, find a used copy of the game and play that. Eventually, I looked more into Xenoblade 2 and I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll play it. I really enjoyed it. It's one of my favorites. And then I got um, this is before the announcement of the Wii U eShop's closure. I found a used copy of Xenoblade X in GameStop and I ordered it online and then there was like some storms in my area around then so the order was delayed so I called them and I was like hey when's my copy gonna come in they're like oh we'll send you another one so they sent eventually I got like my original copy in the case and then eventually I got another copy in like just the envelope and a disc Yo. so <laughs> it, that Yo. was funny because I got like that no, a disc copy just for free. And then many months later, they announced, oh, the Wii U eShop is closing, uh, all that stuff. This will be the last day you can download all your games. And then I saw the, the price of Xenoblade X skyrocket. And I was like, whoa, mm -hmm. what? And then yeah. eventually people were like, oh, I need to get this game. I need to get this game. So I eventually I sold it on Facebook Marketplace or something, but then, um, well, what was I saying? Yeah, basically, I never started Xenoblade X until way later. So I beat one, I beat two, my copy of X was just on the shelf, and then three was announced, and I was very excited, but I was like, I need to, like, at least get a feeling of what X is like. So I think maybe, like, two months before three released, I played a little bit of X, and my friend who I told you guys about, who's, like, really into X, he was telling me all the ins and outs, how some things are similar to three, how some things might carry over into three, 
and then I played it and I was like, this is interesting. I have to like get back into this after I finish three. I finished three and I get back into it, but it took me a very long time to like really get seriously into the game. Like I would be playing it off and on for a long time. I was like, oh, I'll try to beat it before Tears of the Kingdom came out. That never happened. And now flash forward many years after that, this June, like maybe almost two years after I initially started the game, I finally roll credits. And then a couple months later, here we are, the definitive edition announced. And that just goes to show you, like, that kind of brings me into the next topic that I want to talk about. Like, I was talking about how I wanted to try to beat this game before Tears of the Kingdom because I was like, oh, there's another open world game coming out. I'm, my time's going to be so, like, dedicated to that. And when I first played Xenoblade X, I was getting a lot of Breath of the Wild vibes because, like, Breath of the Wild, I obviously played it at launch. I played it on both Wii U and Switch. And I like to tell people that's like the one game I played the most for the past two years, like 2017 to 2019. 90% of what I was playing was Breath of the Wild. And then after the pandemic, I caught up on so many other games. But when I first played Xenoblade X, it gave me those Breath of the Wild vibes of like exploration, finding new things, not being told where to go, figuring things out yourself, the verticality, I can totally see what Monolith Soft took from Xenoblade X and transferred over into Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom with what they learned and what they kind of experimented with. And a lot of people are kind of like, how do these games kind of connect? And it's definitely not in like the puzzle solving and the kind of creativity stuff with like the Sheikah Slade and the arm abilities. It's more in the exploration. So I wanted to hear about that from you guys. Like, what do you think a lot of the uh, parallels between the open world Zelda games and Xenoblade X are because I personally see a lot of that, especially with like verticality, exploration, all that stuff. Xenoblade X, I like to call it reverse Breath of the Wild. Mm. Um, on top of being like a prototype for Breath of the Wild, so just to draw some parallels, Hyrule Castle uh, is in the middle of uh, Hyrule to get to Ganon. You, you're, the goal is to search around Hyrule so that you can conquer the center, right? Yeah. Xenoblade X is the reverse. You're using New Los Angeles to conquer the outside oh, yeah. of, of, of Mira, basically. So yeah. you're starting from the, from the center and going outwards. So in that sense, uh, you can really see how Xenoblade X was kind of a prototype for Breath of the Wild, but then also on top of just the general uh, world layout, there's also the the platforming element of Xenoblade X that Breath of the Wild kind of took from in a way that's kind of, I don't think it's a reach, but in Xenoblade X, you can climb any part of the topography, basically, any part of the environment, any part of the, the world, you can jump on top of it, whether it looks like you can or not, right? In yeah. Breath of the Wild, you can climb anything. So it's pretty much those parallels. There's even little things like with how uh, during certain weather conditions in Xenoblade mm -hmm. X, right? Yeah. When it's un when there's thunderstorms, in your uh, mech, yeah, when there's thunderstorms, your mech takes damage if you're inside your mech. So you mm -hmm. have to decide. Oh, do I want to fight on foot to avoid taking damage or do I want to get inside my uh, or do I want to use my mech to travel faster yeah. regardless of the damage I'm taking, right? Uh, so there's all yeah. these little things in terms of like environmental interaction with Xenoblade X that Breath of the Wild took. Even with the weather conditions in Breath of the Wild, how when it's thunderstorming, if you're holding a metal object, you can potentially get hit, yeah. right? Or get by lightning basically yeah so i i can kind of tell another inverse with xenoblade x and breath of the wild is like breath of the wild from right from the beginning you can climb anything you can get as high as you want as long as you have the stamina to do so but you have the ability to do that whereas in xenoblade x you can jump and climb as much as you can but then many 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 hours later once you have a skill you can go anywhere and do anything Right, so right. it's similar, oh, uh, but also like in Breath of the Wild, you're expanding your stamina, whereas in Xenoblade X, you're expanding your potential to eventually get into your skill and fly anywhere. Yeah. 
Yeah. There's the other thing I forgot too, which is kind of the obvious one, but in Xenoblade X, you can go anywhere from the beginning. Same mm-hmm. with Breath of the Wild. You can yeah. you can go anywhere from the very beginning. Like it's a cold gross level five. Yes. <laughs> you know it's exactly funny. regardless. Yeah. You, you'll get you'll get destroyed <laughs> by the higher level enemies, but oh, yeah. the game lets you go anywhere. Yeah. Same as Breath of the Wild. So you know what's I, crazy? I think it's pretty when, obvious. Yeah. What's crazy with X is some affinity missions. You're locked into that affinity mission. I know there's one with Hope, which you can get relatively early on in the game which takes you to Caldros, and if you're locked into that you're locked in <laughs> even yeah. at a low level yes yes and yes, you're able to like go times. there yeah 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 so, so those are some of the parallels yeah speaking mm-hmm. of like going anywhere even at the beginning of the game one memory i have with x is um this is like way before i could get into Sovalum, but i was like hey what, wouldn't it be cool if i just like swim from primordia all the way to sofalum let's see if i can do it and i did i just like did auto like move and i was just swimming 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 it took maybe like half an hour to get there but i swam all the way from like the coast of primordia all the way to sofalum and i was like this this is giving me real zelda vibes of like going into mm-hmm. like the elden region when i wasn't supposed to getting into gerudo when i wasn't supposed to like it was it was cool yeah yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'll never forget going into some regions entirely unprepared. Um, but to wrap up on the Breath of the Wild Tears of the Kingdom inspiration for me, I also think about it because unfortunately I'm cursed with being a Genshin Impact player. <laughs> um, but at that same token, you know, I also can allude to the fact that, you know, it's very clear and obvious, and they've admitted to themselves Genshin Impact's world is based off of the world of Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild is built with a large reference and incorporation from Monolith Soft's work on Xenoblade Chronicles X. Yeah. So in in essence, you know, it's like Genshin Impact and all its clones sort of revere um, Mo- Z- Xenoblade X as the unspoken I godfather. Luxon was saying something like that. He was like, "It all started with Xenoblade X." No, it all yeah. started with Xeno Gears. <laughs> exactly yeah. and then you yeah. just see the domino effect go yeah. from like this tiny little thing one disgruntled employee the, and yeah. then it just goes to genshin impact multi-billionaire platform takahashi changed the video game industry <laughs> and smack in the middle of that was xenoblade x which had a lot of drastic mechanical changes during its development um for example some people um still remember that this was originally meant to be a single player story experience but then nintendo wanted to go for something with um, multiplayer and online co-op so eventually xenoblade 2 and xenoblade x are notorious for having just really horrendous development periods xenoblade 2 because of the short staffing yeah. Xenoblade X because of the game needing to be scrapped halfway through or large swaths of it needing to be scrapped halfway through and at the same time they had to develop all of these brand new technologies because it was their first time working with an open world game at, on this scale and um, I recall it being for a, for a sense of just how big this game is by the way in your scale <laughs> If you walk from the highest point, the, top, the the farthest point of Noctilum in a straight line on scale, just walking all the way to the very end of Oblivia, that length alone is five times the length of Skyrim. Yeah. And that's not including Silvalum or, or Caldros. Um, so the development for this game, the scale of it, everything completely massive a whole new ordeal that then set up so much of breath of the wild and tears of the kingdom and now to see it come a little bit for full circle um with xenoblade definitive xenoblade x definitive yeah. you know um i'm interested to see what they've changed in the background mechanically to hopefully allow this game to flourish like we've never seen before yeah I'm just happy that this game is going to have the chance to succeed because looking Mm -hmm. back at sales, it's very sad to see how like 
this game was never given a chance like they put so much time effort energy resources into this game and it didn't even hit a million and most of that is because it was just stuck on a dead system at that time so like i, I was always saying in like live streams and videos like this game needs the switch effect so much more than any other wii u game and i'm glad it's getting that second chance but yeah what do you <sighs> I, I want to like transition into like the changes now because I was kind of surprised that the trailer hardly gave us anything to go off of. Of course, we saw the new visuals, character models look great, but like I, I'm most interested in like the menu changes, the user experience of the game, yep, yep. The menu management. Like, of course, the text is a big thing, but like I mentioned once in a video where I was like, there have been hours where I was just stuck in a menu because I was either like specking out all my characters, it was taking too long, the transitions were too slow, the like menu navigation was too like all over the place and too convoluted. So I hope that's changed and that's not even including Frontier Nav. But aside from things like that or like relating to things like that, what do you guys think are some major changes you guys want to see like to make this like a definitive um... edition? Yeah, for me, it's just a couple easy things. First of all, and I keep saying this first, the music that plays while you're flying, just cut it out. Or give us an <laughs> option to turn it off. I just Everyone want dislikes to, it. I just want to hear the, the world music while I'm flying. I want yeah. to hear the regular music. Make items easier to find because they were very vague about item location sometimes yeah. when you were doing certain side quests or yeah when you're doing like the side side quests and not main stuff um pop in you know for the graphics yeah. for the um monster models like yeah. fix that and then the last thing and then i'll let you go uh e drizzle but um the when you're getting your alternate party members uh you have to physically go to their yeah. locations i hate the hangout <laughs> spots because like with me i was just holding up my wii u gamepad and pressing all the little hexagons i was like is this person yeah. here are they here are they here and i was like oh yeah it's too much <laughs> it's, they just give us one i i, I don't know if y'all are playing metaphor refantasio mm -hmm. right now yeah. but mm -hmm. when you, you know? when you need to there's an option when you need to do um the uh social link stuff you can just yeah. open the menu and yeah. go straight to exactly they need to do something like that for xenoblade x so we can just go straight to our alternate party members we shouldn't be having to yeah. scramble and look around new los angeles yeah. mm -hmm. just to find our part just to switch party members that's too much and so i love the idea of it yeah i love the idea of it i love seeing characters actively out in the open world and just you know going about their days or talking with whoever but i don't want to find them as yeah. the game progresses yeah. so often and their spots change depending on missions the time of day, or yeah. what section or the heart what time of day mm. yeah yeah i know i agree on that yeah um i also definitely agree on the items need to be much easier if they can go with the similar vein that they did with definitive edition which i expect them to be i would greatly appreciate that because i'll never forget being so fed up trying to find an item for Eleonora, and um, Eleonora is our main quest giver mm -hmm. in the game, by the way. Yeah, um, yeah. I'll never forget, I need an item. I've never seen it before, so I don't see it in my Collectopedia what it is. And I had to go on the wiki, only to find out it's in this small shore off the eastern segment of Caldros that only spawns at 4 in the morning and 5 in the morning. And I'm like, what on earth? And yeah. that's that's not unique to that item either. There's so many different examples of that game. So many different monster um, rarity, monster item rarity is a thing in this game. Um, I had to do that for mechanical level five. Mm -hmm. I had to go on the wiki and be like, where is this one specific item I need to get? And then it was like, oh, it's in this area by this uh, Frontier Nav probe location. And I had to go there mm -hmm. and then I had to like walk around for like half an hour trying to find the items I needed. So like what they should do is they should do it like how it is in Xenoblade 1 Definitive Edition. So like on yes. your mini map, there'll be like exclamation points and it will be like a dotted line telling you where to go. So they should just do that. And if they want to incorporate it with follow ball, just have the follow ball direct you to like 
a large cluster of where oh, those items even, are. I didn't even think about that. Yes, follow ball is their very first attempt on Xenoblade X yeah. to try and create this sort of pathing system. It was very notorious for people for leading people astray or leading them into places they didn't need to be with higher it, enemies. It would give you. It um, would take you on the long way most of the time. Yes, and it would always cause a lot of grief. I'm like, well, I could just jump over this ledge. You know, I could just do a little bit of platforming with my Super Mario jumps, <laughs> and then I would be right there. But yeah. so um, that's actually another segue into something I would like. I need to see an updated follow ball. Um, they got it pretty well with Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Yes. Um, I think that handled really well. It was a lot more smooth. Granted, there was a lot of questions regard with regards to uh, linearity of the zones with Xenoblade Chronicles 3, whereas they have a much harder time in an open world zone, such as throughout mo most of Mira. So I'm interested to see what tech they'll have for that. A better follow ball, um, streamlining the menu, um, because I remember you, Nishquake, you didn't even find out about augments till much later in the game, it, right? It and that can say something. X prompt, like in the menu yeah. in your gear section, it doesn't tell you press X to set an augment, and I didn't figure that out until like maybe like chapter five, six, seven, around like mid game. And I was like, this is mm -hmm. a central feature. I've been like hoarding so many augments, I don't know where to put them. So like, so many yeah. terrestrials, so many humanoids, so many mechanical augments that could have definitely made boss fights easier for you yeah. if you'd all if you'd only known about that earlier, huh? Yeah, and even <laughs> imagine going yeah. Imagine playing Xenoblade uh, One without using um, gems. Without using gems, that's exactly what augments are. Yeah. I um. E even like menus like the collectopedia or the affinity chart it's just very clunky and like it's just so slow to like go through a lot of those things like i went into the collectopedia once and i would like submit the thing into the collectopedia it would give me that little chime and it would show me oh you you collected this you did this here's the bp that you got and it would be so slow it'd be like 15 seconds for each thing I'm like shorten that down to like one second so i can just speed through all of these so the <laughs> clunkiness of the menus i think that that needs to be overhauled a lot but a lot of people's like worry with this game coming over to the switch is you're not gonna have a second screen to like nope. look at things so how is frontier nav gonna work so what are your guys ideas about that because my thing was most of the buttons on the switch will already be taken up by like things to do because mm -hmm. the wii u gamepad and the wii u classic controller or the pro controller have like the same button configuration as a switch so i was thinking like maybe zl plus zr like that like button configuration can pull up a frontier nav overlay or something like that but it's gonna feel so different because it's gonna be a whole nother menu you're not going to be like easily like you can easily switch probes and stuff but it's going to be a very 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 different experience so how uh, do you guys feel I, about that <laughs> yeah have y'all played splatoon 3 or 2 oh yeah i but have so not, three for me. but i'm curious yeah. to hear what you can compare so with in in splatoon 2 and 3 uh because in the original splatoon to super jump or to how do i say it you could teleport to your teammates by pressing where they were on the map mm -hmm. using the gamepad. Oh, um, okay. but in, yeah, but in Splatoon 2 and 3, they had to change that because there's no gamepad. So mm -hmm. what they did was they let you pull up an overlay um, with, I think it's uh, the minus button. You pull okay. up an overlay and then you use gyro to point at oh. where your teammate is on the screen so you're using the gyro as a as a mouse basically okay so theoretically they could just let you pull up an overlay and then you use the gyro as a mouse to choose each point on the or to choose okay. each probe on the frontier nav that's potentially yeah. what they can do how, they how might, does that they feel might... with the pro controller if you've played with the it pro felt controller. weird yeah. it felt weird it did not feel as good as the gamepad but it felt yeah. like okay this is enough it's mm -hmm. it's like it's a good like band-aid yeah. for the issue like mm -hmm. it makes it uh manageable but it's not it, i don't think they're gonna come up with an elegant solution that feels as good as just pressing a point on the gamepad it yeah. is too 
yeah it's just too um inherently different so that's what i think they'll do but we'll see we'll see how that goes yeah because like i've been talking about like menu navigation and menu design and like all that stuff having a whole other like separate frontier nav menu is going to be a deterrent to a lot of that which kind of sucks but it yeah. is going to be it's going to have to be a compromise for this game coming to switch which is yeah. unless yeah. they make it buttery smooth they yeah. have to they have to try and make some sort of transition between those screens very smooth doesn't yeah. can't feel clunky load times need to be fast and i have no doubt they can pull that off yeah mm -hmm. um for me, I wouldn't expect to see, unfortunately, another um, another tab in the menu. Yeah. Well, but but my hope very much, and you you brought up Metaphor Fantasio very similarly. You know, you press plus and then you press a button on controller just to immediately jump into the archetype menu. Yeah. Um, I would hope something similar. Mm -hmm. When you brought up gyroscope, my problem with that is it leads to a whole question of sensitivity because whereas with Splatoon 2 and 3, you know, you can just move the gyroscope gently and the game will approximate to what's the closest character yeah, to the gyroscope. Yeah, that's true. yeah. Whereas yeah, with yeah, Xenoblade right. Definitive, there's so many small segments. It's like a honeycomb yeah. map, yes. yeah. essentially. Yeah. And you have to balance throughout that. So I would just expect you press plus, then X to open up Frontier Nav. There's going to be maybe probably some snappy animation tied with it. I don't know. Uh, just to go, go into it real quick. Uh, you can probably move with the C stick uh, to select what you want to do, or you can press you know, you can press L and R to go through the different tabs of Frontier Nav because, you know, there's the probe map, there's the tra uh, travel map, and then there's the objective map. Mm, um, yeah. So I imagine, I imagine they'll have it all configured in one section that you can just cycle between with L or R, and then you pick what you want to do very quickly. That would yeah. be the best thing that I would expect for Frontier Nav for how that to be handled. That's what I expect. I don't think that's exactly toe for toe for what they'll go with, but mm -hmm. I think, you know, in terms of streamlining it, streamlining it, making it accessible, making it open, but a large part of that also needs to be reactive. It needs to be very quick. It can't be bad with load times. Yeah. It just needs to overall be a, sna a snappy, quick process for it to feel intuitive. Yeah. Yeah. Because like changing out probes, like from like mining to research or whatever you're doing, or like um, changing like the different viewpoints of the frontier nav mm -hmm. from like the probe viewpoint to like the what is it the actual like frontier nav like if it's like a seeing if it's like a unique monster or a treasure or something like that. Those different um, transitions and toggles need to be like quick and snappy. Yeah. So I um. I have full faith in Monolith Soft because a lot of what, like, Takahashi's biggest thing, like what he was saying, many people are talking about this, is they need to spend a lot of money in this game. They need to, like, overhaul the menus, overhaul some of the look and feel of a lot of things. And we're already seeing that with some of the visuals, but what I've been noticing with Monolith Soft is, like, they've been growing their team quite a bit, and I hope with this game that they invest heavily into UI and UX like me being a UI and UX designer myself, I hope to see this game like have a significant impact on in that area of game development and have that branch into like Xenoblade 4 and beyond because that is a very big criticism a lot of people have with the series in general. Like, oh, there's too many numbers flying over the place, the menus are too hard to handle, and like even Xenoblade 2's like blade menu, it's just kind of convoluted. So Mm -hmm. I hope they significantly invest into that area of development and it pays off quite a bit. But yeah. Um, what else did I... In terms of, like, changes... Oh, yeah. One thing I want to hear from you guys is you guys, like, as we talked about, you guys played this game back in 2015 when it was, like, new and it was, like, a big thing and a lot of people were playing it. I didn't play this until, like, 2021, 2022. So I unfortunately did not get to experience the online. So this is going to be like a new experience for me in a way. So I want you guys to give me some stories about what the online is like and what I should expect and what I should look forward to. Okay. Well, there's two aspects of the online. There's kind of the, the passive online experience, which is people kind of leaving 
was there a hint system? Because I didn't engage with it that much, but I feel like I don't believe there was a hint system, but you could. Was it messages or like yeah, they were yeah, very that's what brief I, messages. Yeah. Oh, so sort yeah, of like yeah, okay, a Souls yeah. game, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. But not, it's not as direct, and I don't think is nearly as expansive. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, it was like a light version of that. Um, and then you had squad tasks, which was, um, you could choose um a faction. I forgot what they call it in the game, but you can choose like a faction yeah. whenever you start up Xenoblade X, and then depending on the faction you choose you guys have a collective squad task. So for example, they might be like, the squad task might be, everybody needs to defeat 32 penguins or something like that. And then once <laughs> y'all beat 32, pe 32 penguins, uh, you get some kind of reward for it. Oh, so there's reward that. reward tickets, right? Yes. Oh, yes. You would yeah. get You would get a handful of reward tickets and you would also get um, some currencies, I believe. Mm -hmm. I yeah but they, yeah. they were usually very minimal but the tickets were what was really worth okay yeah 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 i didn't really engage with that it was like oh okay if i'm around while the squad task is going i'll i'll kill a few penguins but yeah. i'm not gonna go out of my, I, I never went out of my way to do squad mm. tasks um yeah. but then there's the on there's the actual active online which was kind of the fantasy star online thing mm -hmm. on, but again it's not it wasn't as expansive as fantasy star online or monster hunter it was like you will go into a lobby um in your blade barracks area you will go into the lobby and then you would see people um queuing up basically um and i think it was four people you could queue up with four four and, at a time yeah the rooms yeah. itself could fit 32 like the squad itself was 32 players and the squads yeah. themselves could fit were they would all be around doing the overworld tasks. You wouldn't see them in the overworld, but you know, everyone, it would yes. be number go up. Um, yeah, but yeah. for what he's talking about specifically, you would go into a lobby and out of those 32, it'd just be four. So four, four, similar yeah. to the Monster yeah. Hunter-esque thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. So then y'all could go out into basically what I call like um, a pared down version, like a smaller version of an area in the game. So for example, Primordia, you could choose like primordia but it wouldn't be like y'all could explore all of primordia it would be like a small version of primordia where y'all would go out and defeat some monsters mm -hmm. and that was it that was it pretty much i mean it wasn't like a super highly involved thing but it was a cute thing to do like when you know when you wanted to interact with your mm -hmm. friends that were playing xenoblade x but yeah and when i say it's small i'm talking like it very might quick. take you very quick, small areas, almost arena like. Mm -hmm. Late game, <laughs> you know, um, late game players would grind these out in seconds, just straight up seconds. Yeah. And the only the only reason it would take seconds was because it would just load the next instance of mobs. That would be it. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it wasn't like a super, but I do wonder if may I don't know if maybe they could take it further. That's one question I have is how they're gonna handle the online. I really is hope it, they do. Yeah, 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 yeah. They could expand it theoretically. That'd Maybe the nice Switch can handle do. it. There's yeah, rumors yeah. that they're going to, but I don't. Mm, I don't know. That that's a that's a big if. This would be a nice opportunity for them to do so, but I I I'm looking forward to playing online because I I heard that to get some of the best like um um material for crafting like gear. I'm oh, sorry, skills. I, keep calling them gears because i recently recently played xeno gears yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> to craft skills and weapons and armor and equipment and all that you need to be playing online because you can have higher drop rates for those materials that you can use to craft so that's that one and you incentive can get the, that and you can get the tickets or you can get the resources through online much more quickly yeah. and one thing that's very nice is in the barracks there's a um little device that you exchange tickets for certain rewards but you can pretty much in that reward list is every single monster drop yeah, including yep. the higher end ones so at that point if you have the tickets you can get it regardless of how valuable the drop yeah. rate is it'll just cost more tickets yeah um that helped and me then... with getting the flight module because i still had a lot of reward tickets because that system was still available and I couldn't find like some like wings that I needed or something. So I just went yeah. to the dashboard and I got those wings and I got the uh, flight module much quicker. 
And then there's one other segment um, about the online play is when a certain amount of tasks or a certain amount of progression have been done, essentially. And this is happens. This will happen when you open the game and you select whether to go online or not. There's this whole arcing um, percentage bar. When it's completely full, that means that a special online mission to fight Yggdrilith Zero goes yeah. up. With Yggdrilith oh, Zero yeah. being the hardest mob in the game, uh, aside from the final super boss, but it's one of the hardest mobs in the game to fight. And you'd have X amount of time to fight it. You could keep going online and fighting it over and over again. Um, and depending on how many times, because its health bar always resets when it goes down. It'll just be another health bar behind it. So it's it, it's impossible to kill, but you just keep whittling at all its health bars. And eventually, when the event concluded, you would get a large amount of tickets and resources based off of how many times everyone online was able to, to beat it. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Nice. But yes, I would love to see a lot more than just six or seven online bouts. Um, the lobby was pretty fun sometimes because they give you a handful of emotes that were a little goofy. Yeah. Um, you could exchange cards. And one other aspect about online um, was also the fact that you could recruit people and they would join you on your team. You would just go up. Uh, I get it would be a um, it would be a stand next to Eleanor because Eleanor Eleanor is the quest giver, and I believe to her left was another area where you, you can click on a um, you can click on a menu, open it up, and there would be all these different um, online characters, like their main their crosses, their main characters, mm -hmm. and you'd be like, oh, um, I could actually go with another person that's like a. Uh, um, uh, that's running the um, Full Metal Jaguar, like me and Elman, and then we have like three Full Metal Jaguars, and we can do oh, that. Oh, that's cool. Um, and so they wouldn't gain any experience, but I believe if someone used your character, and I could be wrong on this, but if I'm trying my best to remember it, if someone used your character, you would get a portion of the rewards mm. uh, for things that they killed or beat. So that was also very cool. I would love to see a lot more because, again, the fact is, as, as I mentioned earlier, Online co-op and multiplayer functionality was severely limited because they only built that stuff up halfway into development. Yeah. So with Definitive, there's no telling what they could add on to it. It yeah, really is Yeah, I was going to say too, um, and I, I think you were there when I was talking about this niche quick, yeah. but um, if you look at the very, very first trailer for Xenoblade Ooh, X, yes. um, yeah, there was a chat box at the mm -hmm. bottom left when they were out in the open world yeah so when i first saw that i thought that was like the yeah. action commands like oh heal and like do this and do that saying that to your other teammates but was that actually like a kind of messaging thing yeah mm -hmm. yeah oh, so nice. theoretically it could be what i think or what i hope happens with xenoblade x uh, definitive edition is that some of the things that they like uh yggdrezzo was saying like some of the things that they may have cut because they didn't have enough time or because like you know of limited resources or whatever that they just kind of finish up and add all that for the definitive ed yeah. edition you know, to fully realize like what they intended on doing yeah. with this game so um yeah so, so that, that's what i'm hoping for yeah i don't normally play like games online if ever at all like the last time i remember doing something like this was like elden ring but i only did it like just a little because i was playing on playstation most of my friends were on pc so i only mm -hmm. had a few friends to play with it on playstation but i i i've been waiting for something like this i was always like we need a xde or like monolith soft should like create their own kind of like single player mmo kind of game with a new ip i still think that's possible but i don't really know now like my my predictions about their future are kind of like changing now that xde is actually announced and we're actually yeah, getting it yeah but um i i'm very excited to like engage with xenoblade in this very different kind of way but one um one of the final things i want to talk about and this like we don't have to go too in the weeds on this because like some of it like might be a little bit spoilery so this is mostly for like 
the newcomers to oh sorry this is for some of the veterans for x not the newcomers but like i wanted to speculate a little bit about the additional story and me having recently beaten the game things are kind of fresh in my mind but i need to like go back and look into a lot of the lore because like there's a lot of stuff about this in like art of mira and like the art books and all that so i have to go back and brush up on some videos from like JB and Savage and all these Xenoblade X uh, re really devout fans who have a lot of theories about this but uh, some of me and my friends have been like um, theorizing casually about what this could be but I am very happy for especially you guys who have been waiting 10 years for this that that cliffhanger ending is finally going to be resolved and like th this is kind of like delving into spoilers now but there was like two cliffhangers that i noticed like one was that like the life hold was like already destroyed and the other one was like who who is the who is the black knight so i'm excited to see both of those resolved and i wanted to like ask you guys what do you think this new additional story is going to be is it going to be like a future connected kind of thing or do you think we're just going to get like a few additional chapters tacked on to the end of the game are we allowed to talk in full? Because I think we should spoiler tag this section. Oh, then. yeah, I, I, I've given us like, of, of course, I mentioned spoilers before, but like this is another spoiler warning. I'll put it in the timestamps as well. But yeah, we can, <laughs> yeah. We can go in. So, OK, so here's the thing for me. Here's the thing. <laughs> if. OK, let's look at Xenoblade 1, 2 and 3, right? All of those got these pretty expansive, like story add-ons yeah. right now i'm not gonna say i know for sure whether this is gonna be kind of a light kind of like fill in the blanks kind of story add-on or if it's gonna be a full-on expansion uh like future connected or a uh, golden country mm -hmm. or uh future redeemed but yeah. bruh out of all the games that that need something yeah. like that this needed it i feel like this needs it more than all of those, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't know what they intend on doing, but man, I, I, ugh, I think they should go the, the full on expansion route. Now they could just be like, oh, we're just going to explain that. And the theory is, uh, since we're in spoiler, we can talk spoilers yeah. a little bit. The theory is that, uh, or maybe there's a bunch of theories mm -hmm. that Mira is sentient. Like the yes, planet yeah. itself is yeah. is like uh it has a mind and everything. Yeah. Um but I don't know, I feel like you can't if that's really where they're going, you gotta explain so much. Like yeah. there's so much you gotta get into, in my opinion. Like uh I don't know if that can just be like a single chapter. Exactly. Especially by the way, by the way, especially considering how takahashi writes <laughs> i can't <laughs> takahashi is a very like dense like mm. overly convoluted guy yeah you know what i'm saying so i can't see him being like oh yeah you know a couple sentences just to explain why the life holds were still alive and that's it yeah. or, or why the life holds were actually destroyed already and then that's it no uh, takahashi is the type of guy he's gonna go into detail he's gonna over explain He's gonna add in all these extra things, so I'm just gonna talk about what I, I I'm just gonna put that out into the universe. Oh, That's yeah. what I hope happens. I, I <laughs> hope so I hope, too. But because you know, how future connected, you could it, like start from the very beginning. You could just go all the way down, go to extra story, and start it. So a lot of people who had already played Xenoblade One, like the first thing they did when they got Definitive Edition was Star Future Connected. And that would be nice if you could do that with Xenoblade X, like starting the extra story from the very beginning, because that's what I would want to do. I would want to experience the extra story right from the start so I can avoid spoilers, just see what that is, and then jump back into X and just have fun once again with the game. Ah, that's a good point. That yeah, would, to avoid because people are some people are going to. Yeah, that's true. I, that's I true, hope man. so, because think about how like. I spent like 110, 15 hours in the game. If I have to yeah. spend all that time just to see the additional content at the end, that's gonna <laughs> that's gonna be tough. So I yeah, really hope yeah. it's available from the start. And yeah, I think um, a lot of people were saying 
like it might just be a few additional chapters i think that is possible but like gk i think you brought up a really good point that like there's a lot that they need to explain in this because i was talking about in my video where i was like the main threat was the ganglion you defeated the ganglion but the big like question after that is what is the mystery of mira there is something about this planet what is it and that is like there's so much that you can explore in that you can explore like mimeism lore you can explore like black knight lore clurian lore like all these things uh ghosts ghosts are mm -hmm. like the entities that were not even referenced in the game but in the art book and like yeah. ghost well, the ghost lore and elma's race like where does elma come from all these questions can be answered in this and i think that is more than just a few chapters like yeah. i was on the few chapters camp but now i think like w we need a full-on expansion that we can ex experience in the very beginning of the game i would i would appreciate yeah. that <laughs> well the ghosts are in the game they're actually the purple entities at the very start yes. of the game it's the, just it's they're just there they're, but they're not like referenced as ghosts they're not yeah. they're not whatsoever but yes at the very start of the game how it's the samar federation yes. and the ganglion are just one tiny percentage <laughs> yeah. of the federation versus these ghosts um that are the ghosts are what follow us but we somehow land on mira and there's ganglion on mira um, oh. So that's like what is what's going on here. So yeah, there's there's many. I wouldn't say discrepancies, but very loose ends. That is this game going to lead into an X two? If so, what we need is to have um, because if they're going to conclude everything somehow in these in these post chapters, that is a lot of loose threads that they need to weave and connect together for it to all make yeah. sense coherently and for it to feel satisfying. I don't think that's going to be the case. I don't think we're going to get a full ending to the story after all the story never truly ends yeah um, <laughs> we're going to what i think is going to happen is they're going to take these threads by the handful and they're going to connect them into smaller more coherent threads where we can get a sense of what things are but they're not going to still conclude everything we're going to get a little more closure with Lau. We're going to finally know who our Black Knight figure is. We're going to maybe understand maybe a little more history about how um, Elma knew to go to Earth. And maybe a little bit more speculation about Samar Federation, the ghosts, etc. What happened on, uh, on the uh, destruction of Earth exactly? Because one of the theories I've touted for the longest time is Exodus Day... And yeah. Klaus pushing the button aren't mutually ex yeah. exclusive. No. But for that, you know, we'll need to know a little bit more about the Savior right? Le Rebels and things yeah. like that. There are, wait, 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 wait. Saying... Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Yeah. You're saying that you, you feel like Xenoblade 1 is connected to X? <sighs> it's such a very hard push. <laughs> I fully know. It's very, I can't even fully believe Here's that myself. Here's my thing with it. A lot of people like are to trying to connect yeah. X to the numbered games. I don't think so, but here's one thing that is kind of like annoying me a little bit. People are watching the trailer for XDE and like Lynn is like narrating about like what's been what's been happening. New LA is our beautiful lie to ourselves. And then it shows like Earth being blown up and then there's like a tr video transition. It's like an effect that they did in editing, I'm sure, that it shows like a bright light and then it goes into the next scene. And I've seen like, that. Oh my god, it's Klaus's experiment. I'm like, no, no I don't it's think literally so. a scene transition. No, it's, I, not. it's a scene transition. And like very is, clear. They they yeah. did something special where they had because the Earth took up 80 percent of the screen. They had the they had the glow up start with the Earth. That's literally it. I fully yeah. believe that's just a transition. Yeah, the thing not is, a, not a phase thing, transition. Or sorry, there's two <laughs> things that I believe that can connect this to the numbered Xenoblade games, but. I'll get into that a little bit later, but Idrissel, what are you saying about the experiment and stuff? What are you saying? No, it's uh, it's still just a very hard stretch, but yeah. I, I I would like to believe in the madness that is Monolith Soft. Yeah. Somewhere along the way, someone's thinking, how can I connect uh, Exodus Day yeah. and the separation of uh, like the creation of these parallel worlds? It's, it's and that's not the out other of the thing. realm of possibility because I don't like 
looking back at it, Xenoblade 1 had retcons. They weren't like massive retcons, but they were retcons to fit into Xenoblade 2. The thing is, I, like me and particularly my buddy Dumb Zeno on the channel Dumb Zeno, he and I were discussing a lot of this stuff after I beat X and after we like discussed about Feature Redeemed and all that stuff, but there's a lot of similarities to the life hold in Origin and to Mira and Ionios. And like, it's not e exactly connected, but what we were thinking was if the Xenoblade X events happen in a parallel universe, there could be some kind of origin technology, which is not the same origin that was built in like Xenoblade 1 and 2's world, but a similar kind of technology that is explaining a lot of these weird events. Like, why is Mira like a jigsaw puzzle of different planets? Why is all why are all the weird stuff happening in Mira? A lot of these things can almost not a lot of them can be explained because like oh it feels like origin but a lot of it sort of can like you guys remember that cutscene at the end of x where like the cat was like being created back into like like a, a normal cat mm -hmm. like from the dna of like uh, all that yeah. stuff i was yeah. like dude this reminds me of three this reminds me of like people storing their lives with core crystals into origin and then like it's just recreated in the new world or something like that yeah I, one more I, one more thing on that before we move to the next topic um uh i saw when nintendo originally promoted xenoblade x on their twitter they did call the game a spiritual yes. successor yeah <laughs> they were yeah. very specific to say a spirit. So, I, so I, I do wonder, but I mean, I don't know. There's the Monado hair bow that yeah. Lynn has, and then there's that one quest with the um with the one no pond that references um like the legend of the um, sort of legendariness. Yeah, Le this, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Legendariness, legendary frontier village. There's so many. Yeah, Tatsu yeah, mentions so, Hams. Um, yeah, so I, don't know. Just... I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, I'm not getting it, my hopes okay. up. I'm not getting my hopes up because, like, if if they want to connect it to the mainline games or not mainline, I, just the Klaus games, the numbered games, this is an opportunity for them to do so. I don't think they will, but there are hints that, or there are parallels that I see, and back to the origin and life hold thing. If there is something like origin that is like governing all the weirdness happening in Mira, maybe the people who are controlling that are similar to Mobius and consoles. This is getting way in the weeds. This is like probably yeah. none of it's gonna happen, <laughs> but the way we saw the Black Knight in the art book looks eerily similar to a console or a Mobius. And again, I'm not getting my hopes up, but it would be kind of insane if those are parallels and a lot of people yeah, are saying yeah. that the black knight sounds like david menken i don't know about that yet i if if it is malice i'll like freak out but i'm not getting my hopes up about that but that would be one way to connect them. One, his roles concluded in one through three but we still know through the ionios moments yes. book that there's still something to go on with Malos later on. There's still a lot of stuff left behind with regards for two's side of the transition yeah. into three, um, as compared to Xenoblade ones. Um, so there's still quite a lot of room that they could explain a few things about Xenoblade two's characters appearances. Um, David Menk, I would I would much rather the Black Knight's identity be the uh, forgot not forgotten the, the unsung hero. hero. The original or hero Elma's, of the game. He's also Elma's original partner, it was, right? It was Elma's original partner. They sacrificed themselves because when the ghosts caught up to the white whale um, and they attacked, they actually breached a segment of the residential district. And uh, Elma's partner wasted no time in getting on his scale and fending it off. And in a last ditch effort to secure the residential district and make sure all the people there were okay, he literally ejected him and his skull with the ghost out into space. Oh, oh yeah. And I remember. In space, oh, skulls are not capable of space travel. 
So he willingly sacrificed himself and just let his um, body essentially float out into space. Now, it could be that Mira works in mysterious ways. There's maybe just plain old gravity or something. Um, but Mira is very exceptional about taking things that shouldn't be there and putting them on the planet. And we know... I don't know if you've completed Yelv's story, Nishquick. Um, in one of the final bits of Yelv's missions, they come across a piece of the Mimeosome that was the original hero. Yeah. Um, and another thing is um, parts of Caldros, if not all of Caldros, was reminiscent of the Rothian homeworld where Gijarig and Gabuid are from, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, huh. that's that's another thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And I would love, I didn't get to talk about it yet, but um, with regards to what we could expect for a new story, mm -hmm. Whether it's a whether it's a, you know wait 120 hours for the new content, um, I can see it being that way. Unfortunately, again, it could just be the way that the game is set up naturally would oppose a new story segment. I would like it to be a new story segment, completely independent. You know, for people like us who just want to go in, I'm not going to be upset if that's not the case, just because of the way um, the game the the way the game presents itself. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I would like to have seen is the incorporation of the four stories because there are four promotional stories that oh, yeah. were created prior to the game being um, released. Um, they've been translated for years and years and I remember that was one of the things I would do to hype myself up while waiting for it is I would read these stories. Because um, for example, why is planet Mira named Mira? Yeah. It's named after Mira Torres, who people won't know. Yeah. Um, why are we showing up two months after? What happened in the two months that um, there was like occurred? a Van Damme and Nagi story, right? So many people know about Exodus Day is the day that we we left, but there's also Independence Day, which is the day the White Whale crash lands on Mira, mm -hmm. and for a solid 24 hours, you know, we've just took a whole chunk of Primordia displaced so many monsters these indigens they're on a absolute rampage yeah. and it's a 24-hour bloodbath with nagi vandom anyone they can get their hands on um trying to get to certain depots so they can access their scales and it's just a bloodbath to carve out I the territory not, I, I did not read this i need to y'all yeah. need to link me that i need to oh yo i didn't know those man. stories yeah there's yeah, another yeah. there's another egg segment where it's lynn doing maintenance and meeting up with someone during their days in space and then the fourth one i think is tatsu it explains why tatsu shows up in the container at yeah. the very start of the game yeah. it's because he gets captured by by the the prone and in his moments of captivity, while he's being transported, he's looking up outside the container and he sees a shooting star and he wishes on the star that like something's going to change and he can be safe. Nice. Wow. And then that's the white whale crashing. Um, so but, <laughs> that's cool. But Nagi's, but Nagi's is my favorite. And that's why I love Nagi and Vandom so much. It's just it's just two men just barely coming out of consciousness like unconsciousness from crash landing and the first thing they see is the control bay of the ship just being throttled by a monster like twice its size wow um so i just love going back to that i'm gonna reread that that's cool actually definitely yeah definitely um, link that to us yeah, yeah that's fire I'll, can you I'll imagine the description too can you imagine a bonus story uh, like feature where it's just you play as nagi and then there's an actual playable vandom Man. and it's just it's just a d-day scenario where you're just mm -hmm. going right for it yeah um, and you like fight off wave after wave then you get in the scales i don't know yeah. i know they're not going to do that playable but be, vandom would be so it'd be cool. cool to see stuff like that incorporated into the game because so people aren't going to know that yeah that, that that's that's interesting yeah i remember you talked about this in a prior podcast we did but yeah like this is their opportunity to 
add more to the story. Like, X already has a boatload of world building through the side quests, the lore, the... Um, it's just so much you can dig into with the world building of that game. But mm -hmm. even beyond that, just adding more stuff, finishing off the story, it could answer so many questions and give us so much more, like, things to just chew on with this stuff. The fact that so many loose threads still exist is both its undoing when we think about it in the Wii U version of the game, but it also has just allowed us to create so many scenarios, so many sparks, yeah. so many ways things can go, because it's, it is half-baked. The, the dough is yet to rise all the way. Yeah. There's so much that we can still learn and grasp and so many ways this story and all these loose segments can end up being that right now until we see more it's anyone's guess yeah. Yeah. and i expect you know maybe the next time we see a trailer maybe it'll be the ui trailer mm -hmm. or like they're gonna do like a combat trailer because there was a there was a nintendo direct specifically for how to play xenoblade chronicles x yeah. who knows we could get something very similar a yeah. direct mini again for it we should get with a, all these so you things. know the xenoblade 1 de overview trailer was narrated by dunban's va so what if we mm -hmm. get an x overview trailer narrated by lao or someone that would be so cool yeah that would be cool yeah. if they did it with lao because a lot of people are probably going to look at lao when the game begins i'm like why did they talk about the, why did they show this character so much i'm not really interacting mm -hmm. with him till like chapter four chapter five um, why but, like yeah. why wouldn't it be like elma's va who's who elma's va has gone back like on twitter and says like oh surprise look at all this yeah. get ready yeah yeah the more y'all the more y'all kind of uh talk about it though the more i'm like considering all of the loose ends in the game it does seem like it will make more sense to just make the definitive edi edition a setup for xenoblade x2 because there's actually literally my next much. question it has to yeah it's my too much yeah. my next question was are we getting an x2 and if so like how is it going to set up what do you guys think well I'll, I'll tell you how it's going to set up we're gonna we're gonna work with mirror b or Professor B, excuse me, yes. I'm playing Pokemon now. Professor B. Yeah. <laughs> Back to the future guy. Exactly. I he's love gonna, that side quest. Yeah. I love that side quest. <laughs> that was one of the best ones. That was so good. Yeah. Oh my god. That side quest felt like a game of its own. Like It really did. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I love Professor I love the side quests. Yeah. I would still argue that um, up until Xenoblade 3, Xenoblade X had the best side quests in the game. And even yes. even now, there's still very memorable ones that just stick out, like like Professor B, like the alien one. Um, my favorite one that I was telling Nishquick about is like, okay, you see that pizza guy? Oh god, the pizza <laughs> quest. That start that insane. quest. And, start that quest and see how it ends, and you're not gonna believe how it ends. It was insane. I I don't want to spoil yeah. it in this podcast, but. Oh boy, that was that was insane. That whole like, ride the, through that quest was insane. Did y'all do the water purification? Yes, that yes. was also insane. All was like water purification. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's yeah. a bunch of there's like two different side quests that involve like marriage. Yes, Those both, yeah. like one of them ended really weirdly. I remember that. Yeah. Um, honestly, like, and you know what? Um, I would still argue Zimblade X has some of the best quests in the game, specifically because a large chunk of them are actually factored by your choice yeah yes yes yeah straight up 1, npcs percent. can die like not just one or two but like like a good handful will just yeah. straight up like yeah. die or things will change in the open world if depending on your choice mm -hmm. like uh, oh my gosh are we gonna have bacon are we gonna have some 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 little bacon for us uh or are we gonna let these little piglets live yeah. <laughs> and what's gonna happen yeah. in ways yeah. we don't expect two chapters down the line yeah 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 um <laughs> yeah bringing it back to the topic of the sequel yes, yes. <laughs> what do you like if if this all like sets up for a sequel which i think it could with the possibility that we're having um other colonies like there's new paris new tokyo New Tokyo was in the art book. I think New Paris was in a side quest. Like, when do you think we could see a sequel and what do you think the sequel could be? Are we still going to be following Elma and Lynn and these people in this story or are we going to have a new cast of characters? I think it would be nice to see 
Mira from a whole nother perspective. And I think uh, Luxon had this really cool idea where like you start in New Paris, New Tokyo with your primary party and eventually midway into the game, you reunite with New LA and then mm -hmm. you kind of collaborate with them to like there's maybe a new force of aliens, maybe there is remaining ganglion, or you're fighting against the Black Knight and his army of uh, whatever, like maybe the ghosts come back. Maybe the I would hope the Clurian have a bigger role in the story because all we saw was Celica and Rock and there's so many cool like um, hints to the Clurian uh, race in the art book as well. So those are just some ideas I have, but yeah like when do you think we like just seeing just imagining a xenoblade x2 on the switch 2 is just like it's mind-blowing like a bigger a world sure. new continents um on the switch 2 better visuals oh it's just it's amazing yeah i think um i think xenoblade x is kind of a different beast um from the numbered games in the sense that the focus of these games is more so on the world at large yeah. and less on oh we're following these characters yeah. and and their their growth and their I mean, you of course you have the affinity quest and stuff like that but it's not as character driven as like a xenoblade 2 is for example um so so because of that reason i think it would actually be easier for them to just uh have the characters still there yeah because the focus or let me say this it will be easier for them to keep the same mirror because yeah. that's the character that that is like the focus of xenoblade x is the world versus yeah. like i feel like the other games are more so the world is important but not as important as like yeah. the people and their role in it do you think so i do like, think yeah I think they'll swap out the cast, but Elma will still be around. Yeah. Lynn will still be oh, yeah. around. Like, and uh, you'll just have a new group of people that are, um, you know, a new segment yeah. of the Blade organization that's kind of navigating Mira mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Do you so, think it'll be yeah, similar to Tears of the Kingdom where they recycle like a chunk of the map, like Tears of the Kingdom recycled Hyrule? Do you think they'll do that with the five continents, but maybe add some more continents as well? Was to be honest, I hope they do that. Yeah. <laughs> I hope they do that because I think, and some people didn't like this about Tears of the Kingdom, but recontextualizing the world and seeing it from a different perspective, it was really cool to be like, mm -hmm. oh, wow, this place is destroyed now. Or, oh, they have yeah. built up this, this segment of the world or... You know, this race has moved over here now. Uh, you know, it was really interesting to see the world change like that in Tears of the Kingdom. So I think, I think they'll do it. I think yeah. that's what they'll it do. You could save up on development so. time too. <laughs> yes, 1000%. Yeah. 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 And I think oh, with I what we were talking about with Mira having a mind of its own, there can be a lot of room to change things up in this already recycled world if they use it for x2 yes yeah yeah, yeah. what are your thoughts there's you? also well there's a lot of questions with how they can go with x2 so again with the remnants of everything left throughout caldros the mysteries of silvalem the mech the the mechanical waste parts of oblivia like there's yeah. so many ways that this world could be like shaped up as it uncovers for all we know let's find out if mira is sentient and what happens if we unlock the core of mira like will the world respond and change uh, accordingly you know that could be a whole segment that the whole world just evolves there's also ways that humanity can change because yeah we have access to the life hold again uh sure enough it got damaged but i mean why is the dna segment of it still working um, could we somehow get the memories of people's um, oh, yeah. mims oh, yeah. installed and we actually have like flesh and blood walking in LA again? Yeah. If that's the case, are people going to want to change out of mims? Because mims, in a sense, give them a sense of safety and immortality. Yeah. Because um, so there's there's so many different questions the way things can go. Um, a lot of 
um, a lot of the race is working hand in hand, but you know, some people are still tentative. Racial tensions between humanity and uh, xenomorph life forms is still it's a very hot topic in that game so like at yeah, least half yeah. the quests are probably based off of it if i have to be yes, honest yeah um could the could the ghosts the rest of the ghosts have caught up and they land on mira there's a ghost expansion to say the least yeah, from my mmo experience yeah. from my mmo side of things uh will it will be like a arc centered around the ghosts because now we have a bit of info about the samar could it bring Samar Federation further into the fold as the ghosts also show up? That's another thing I was thinking of uh, when we were talking about who could the Black Knight be. Um, on his model, you... On his datamine model, because on the Wii U version, you only ever see him from the um, from the sky, yeah. so you never see it. But on his the central part of his chest is it's, a purple, purple core. Yeah. yeah. And you know... What oh, I should have brought this up because that, when I was thinking about it, it's like, oh, Malos, you know, it makes sense. He's a purple guy, but the ghosts are also pretty yeah. purple. That's who's what made me think this... about Mobius, honestly. Yeah, and Mobius, and who's to say that? Who's to say that as this guy is just stuck in space with the ghost that he uh, took out? Who's to say that the ghost, because ghosts are classified as organic, completely organic organisms. Yeah. Who's to say that didn't fuse with him in some way, shape, or form? And we have, like, a little remnant of it, like, strewn, strewn to his chest. Yeah. There's so many ways it can go. Yeah. Um, yeah. And some of that might be answered in the additional story we're going to get, but mm -hmm. obviously with, like, any Xeno... Any Z no game from what I played, like there's always going to be questions at the end. Always will be. Yeah. Always. Yeah. So to wrap things up, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited for this game. I'm very excited to jump back into Mira, even though like I recently beat it. I'm 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 probably gonna stay away from my Wii U copy. Probably not continue my live stream session because I just want to kind of have like a break with the game and then jump back into it and have like a fresh experience from the very start but i'm very excited for this and it's coming out very soon so to anyone who is still watching at the end i'll i'll have the spoiler section like uh portioned out so you you can skip forward but if you guys haven't played this game do yourself a favor pre-order it get excited for it i wish you got a, a special edition or a collector's edition but doesn't seem to be happening right now, but do you guys have any final thoughts before we close out? I really hope that uh, this game gets the biggest boost from the Switch effect. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, 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 cause in my, I feel like they saved, saved the best for last. Yeah. That's what they were, they, they knew that uh, this is the one y'all were waiting on. We're going to work hard on this one. And we're going to have the biggest install base. So I, I hope this gets the biggest boost from the Switch effect. People go out and and support this one because um, it's a special game to me. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's great. It stands yeah. like if I were to rank this game with the other games, like I, I wouldn't. The reason I put the numbered games higher is mostly because of how the story has impacted me and how much I relate to the story in those games. But... I always say, in terms of gameplay, in terms of technical prowess, this is up there, if not the number one when it comes to Monolith mm -hmm. Soft. And yes. there's many people yeah. who say Xenoblade X is the best game that they made. And like, most definitely, this is what, easily the most impressive game that they've made. With all of this on like Wii U and now like being able to play it on Switch, I'm, I'm very excited that, I'm very happy that this game is getting the chance to shine once again. And yeah, like it, it needs that switch effect. I remember Skyward Sword HD sold about the same as it did on the Wii, and then it got a little bit of a boost after that. This is, I it's definitely gonna hit a million, and that's gonna oh, be yeah. very happy yeah, to see yeah, because so this game just it, it it was every it had everything against it, and it's finally getting that second chance. So yeah, yeah. dreams come true. I mean, I'm. I'm a little curious right now because um, this game, the way they marketed it just out of the blue like that, drew so much attention. I remember it was number five on 
trending on YouTube. Oh, and one within, more like, thing three hours. is mm -hmm. Luxon recently tweeted this. Let me read this out. He said, the the XDE reveal trailer has hit a million views in under a week. For comparison, the most viewed trailer for the original version is at 1.4 million lifetime since 2013. Xeno has come mm -hmm. such a long way since then and has been so rewarding seeing all this growth in real time. So yeah, we... Oh yeah. We 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 have <laughs> we have a group of people whose largest audience is about three to four million people. Um, that's not including player. Like, it, obviously, there's some merge because people who played one have probably played two. People who played two might have given another game a shot. But let's just look at the largest population, which is two players, and that's a nearly four million lifetime. I think something like around three there. million. Three million. Okay. Yes. Well. Let's look at the people who played one and can get a hold of uh, didn't get much care for two or people who bought three for whatever reason. For yeah, one. yeah. The no, point, the point that, is yeah. with, with all of those, like we can expect the Xenoblade audience and, you know, Xenosaga, Xenogears fans, people who don't really want to play the game, the, the, those game, they don't want to play the Blade games, but, you know, they see the scales of X and then, you know, the itch for the scale fantasy sort of kicks in and yeah. it's like oh maybe maybe i will get into the xeno series and it'll or the xeno blade series and it'll yeah. be through x the point is we have a target audience i could easily see spanning four to even five million people compared to how that game was 10 years ago mm -hmm. you know barely heard of no one knew who shulk was until he entered smash bros no one knew about pyramithra except booba fantasy slot but i mean <laughs> years have come by the reputation is proceeding itself <laughs> the games are good everyone that i know of is telling you please play the trilogy even right now with nintendo if you use your two vouchers you can get xenoblade one two and three that's a oh, new thing they did this week I believe so. I need to look into that more, I, but I, I believe I that's what I read. I, I don't know. I think they're just saying that all three of these games are now available for vouchers. For but vouchers? If you can, uh, if, if you can get they all should three have been of them with those two vouchers, that is an insane steal. But I like, need to look this up. I'm yeah. Like, okay, but I'm sorry. But I, I think it's amazing that all the Xenoblade games are selling so well for JRPGs on one singular system. I think that's very commendable. Um, take that, Square Enix. <laughs> That's all I gotta <laughs> say. But yeah. Oh um, yeah. But I can easily see this game getting three times the sales it did on on Wii U, if not yeah. considerably even higher than that. That's just to go to show. Yeah. And again, you know, please don't skip out on this. It's there's so much work that's probably yeah. been done behind the scenes. I've I expected to. They have a definitive core team. They have a brand new R and D team. They, they're not building from the ground up this time. They've oh, had, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, they did they, start hiring more people. Yeah, they I, are at two hundred and seventy people. That was their concern compared. with this game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They needed more money, resources, manpower, and they have that now. They've significantly grown. Like even like comparing them before Xenoblade Three released, they've significantly grown. But all this time, they've been working on X, polishing up X as they've grown and hired more people so they're they're at the top of the, their game now they're like a they're a studio to be like to keep your eyes on in the gaming industry i think they really are yeah yeah um uh yeah and uh, once again to all the zelda fans watching breath of the wild tears of the kingdom fans this is gonna scratch your itch for another open world game which is just amazing one of the best open world games of all time but yeah any Final thoughts from you two, like closing thoughts before we finish off here. That's it from me. Yeah. I'm going to say, please play this game the same way that I would treat playing Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom. Yes, the story can be fun for some people. Yes, there's a lot of intrigue as you're going through it. But please, you know, don't ignore the world at large. Explore every nook and cranny. This game, I've gone on record several times to say that this is the collectathon of the Xenoblade games by far. Please just go yeah. about it at your own pace. Play Take for your yourself. There's no rush whatsoever. Yeah. Stay off stay offline if you don't want the spoilers. There's yeah. not I, I understand, but just go at your own pace and truly yeah. enjoy it because it really is just 1, so percent agree. It's yeah. such yeah. a weird and wonderful world. Yeah. 
yeah yeah most definitely but yeah thank you two so much for coming on the exp podcast it was a great discussion i knew i had to bring on two of my two of the biggest xenoblade x fans i know who make content on youtube but yeah i mean there's so many other huge ex- of fans of xenoblade chronicles x but like i knew i i would love to have a discussion with you too so thank you guys for coming on um gk and yggdrasol's uh youtube social media twitter blue sky all that stuff will be in the descriptions down below and check out their channel for um gk has some awesome like streams that he does like he's just chatting about video games the industry like any big news that's coming out and he has some cool gameplay videos as well yggdrasol similar kind of stuff nintendo rpgs similar to me if you enjoy the content that i make check out yggdrasol as well and yeah yeah this is this was an awesome discussion this is Nishquick GK Yggdrasil signing off. Have a great day. Go play some great games today, like a Xenoblade Chronicles game on the Nintendo Switch. I'll see you guys in the next one later. Peace. See y'all. <laughs> hey guys, this is Nishquick. Thank you so much for watching that video. And if you enjoyed it, check out these two videos on the left and maybe subscribe if you haven't on your way out. And big shout out to all my channel members whose names you can see on the screen right now. I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.